I was just thinking about the cross and how Jesus, when he went to the cross, he went through the whole process, the entire thing. I mean, he was a man. He was the man that God became. And he did need to die for our sins. That's true. And if you can understand and accept that, you still might have the question, why couldn't it be quicker? Even in the context of the cross, they they put the sponge up to him with the hyssop and the vinegar, and they had some pain-relieving aspects to it. Why not take some of that? Why not take some of the edge off of it? We say, well, he had to suffer because of sin. But do we really mean that? Or do we really understand the significance of of the evil of sin? And that when we say, well, when Paul says, which is essentially God saying through Paul, the wages of sin is death, do we really know what that means? Because sin separated us from our God. We were disconnected from our God because of sin. And it wasn't a horrendous sin. It was a sin of not trusting him. It wasn't murder. Murder obviously followed. And that's what people tend to focus on. That, oh, one sin leads to the next. And the next thing you know, you're a murderer. But the significant thing that happened was Cain did not know his God. Adam was estranged from his God. And so that's the significance of sin because what happens here in this world is all temporal. Even when you kill someone and when we die... As individuals, we, it's it's a temporal thing and a temporal life. But what sin did was it literally killed us to our God. So our God, in order to fix that, had to pay for that sin. Had to pay for all the sins. And you really got to think about this, or at least I ask anyone to think about this that he was paying for the sins of the entire world, of all humanity, past, present, future, as they say, all sins that have happened that are happening right now and that will happen. So God becomes this man and he goes to this cross and he suffers for every single sin. He does not even take a little hyssop to take the edge off of it. I'm sure there's other kind of herbs he could have drank. Straight alcohol, he could have done a lot of things. He could have supernaturally caused his death to happen right away. But he didn't. And there's that's not an accident. There had to be a reason for that. And I was thinking that in the context of what we do to sin. We anesthetize sin. We numb sin. We reduce the significance of sin because sin in conventional Christianity wasn't dealt with by the blood and suffering death of our Messiah, of our Jesus, of our Savior who came here like one of us to suffer on our behalf and die. That's not what took care of sin, not in conventional conventional religion, conventional Christianity, what takes care of sin is this anesthetized, I don't know what you call it, it's just neat and clean and it, it's not really that ugly and some people talk about how beautiful it is, a, a confession, a repentance, a, yeah, there's a couple of tears involved, but it's really this wonderful thing and, and that's what takes your sin away. It's not your best friend saying, no, you deserve to die and I can't save you by any other means than this, than that I should do it for you. It's no longer that. That's what it was. And that's what it is in reality. But what they've corrupted it into is this antiseptic, numbed, dumbed down, diminished, meaningless, not even shadow of what he did. It's no sacrifice at all. And once you practice it, you can do it pretty good at the drop of a hat. You might even be able to produce tears. You can wail. You can fall down. You can jump. You can really look sad. And you can get your reward. 
Like he said, they have the reward. But what do you want? Do you want your Savior saving you? Or do you want to be the one that causes him to save you? Through your repentance, penance, confession, or whatever religious activities you can do. That's all I ask in Jesus' name.